In this video, we are going to discover in what ways did the Roman Empire collapse and how did Rome manage to fight against the Hunnic Empire, the ancestors of the Turks and Mongols, which provoked the movement of the great barbaric tribes to the west, known as the Great Migrations. These topics in history might not be considered as being really important for all of us. However, this video is going to be focused on the Hunnic Empire and its great leader Attila, who invaded Europe and fought against Asius in the last great battle of the antiquity period, Battle of the Catalonian Plains. Before advancing immediately to the rise of the Hunnic Empire, we must first understand how it all began. If we take a look at Europe around 375, the Roman Empire dominated almost all the Mediterranean Sea, from Iberia to Minor Asia. The Roman Empire was at its peak and was the most influential, cultural and richest empire in the world. Rome being its capital was the most visited and attractive city in Europe, especially for its magnificent theatres and gladiator duels in the giant stadiums in one of them known today as the Colosseum. The Romans were so wealthy that every region of the empire seemed to go well. There was nothing else than happiness and peace all around the Mediterranean Sea. However, as time passed and the end of the 4th century approached, the Roman Empire would soon deal with problems, as at the northern part of the empire, on the other side of the Limes, as we say in Latin, resided a gathering of Germanic tribes, known to the Romans as Barbarians, which can be explained by the fact they did not belong to the Roman Empire. In the west resided essentially the Franks, Saxons and others, whereas in the east lived the Goths, Vandals, Burgundians and other Germanic tribes. These tribes who did not want to capitulate to the Romans weren't yet a threat for the borders of the empire. Suddenly, as if an animal was running away from its predator, the Goths migrated westward and found a refuge in Crimea after having left the eastern regions of modern Ukraine in a hurry. This migration was due to the arrival of the Huns in the east, arriving directly from the steppes. This is when the story of the Huns and the Great Barbaric Migrations really begins. Huns, which signifies multiple ethnicity in ancient Turkic, originated from the Xiongnu Confederation, which had been a Turkish Mongolic empire created by Shanyu Modu in Mongolia around 300 BC. 
The Huns were then forced to migrate from Mongolia westward after having been defeated by China under the Han Dynasty in 91 AD. In 375, they unified themselves in the eastern steppes of Eurasia around the Volga region. The Huns were described as being strong horsemen similarly to their ancestors in Mongolia and were the most terrifying warriors of all time history. The Huns were arriving to crush all the ones who stood against them. They were there to fight and spill blood. From 350 to 380, the Huns moved towards the Volga and the Don rivers under their chief called Balamber, where they entered in contact with the Alans, a Scythian tribe that had migrated from the Caucasus region. The Huns defeated them and forced them to join their army. The Huns and Alans then advanced south to northern Crimea and pillaged the Gulf settlements which resulted as the beginning of the Great Migration. The Gulfs then split into the Visigoths and Ostrogoths. The Visigoths escaped the Huns by migrating into the Roman territory, although the Ostrogoths became allies of the Huns. The Visigoths invaded the eastern part of the empire and defeated the Romans at the Battle of Andrinople in 378, which was the first great defeat of the Roman Empire. The Visigoths then moved to the west of the empire in direction of modern Italy, which would become a great enemy of Rome as well as with the Persian Empire in the east. Back in the east, the Huns as well who had managed to cross the Danube River reached the borders of the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire was at that time already threatened by the Sassanid Empire in the east and the Visigoths in the north. They did not want to face other problems. This is why in order to facilitate the defense and the protection of the empire, in 395 the Romans decided to divide the Roman Empire into two parts. The Western Roman Empire with its capital being no longer Rome but Milan and Ravenna and the Eastern Roman Empire with its capital Constantinople, which would later be known as the Byzantine Empire. At the beginning of the 5th century, the Germanic tribes started migrating towards the west as the Huns advanced, and they started to spread across the Roman Empire, such as the Vandals who migrated to join the Visigoths in order to fight against Rome. Whereas other tribes such as the Sarmats, who were Scythians as well as the Alans, joined the Hunnic army. However, the Huns were not yet a threat for the Romans at that moment. As in 400, Balamber's successor, Aldine, seemed to have good relations with the Roman Empire. He eventually helped the Western Roman Empire led by Flavius Stilicho to defeat the Visigoths and Vandals at the Battle of Thessalia in 406. In 410, King Alaric, the Visigoth king, sent his armies to the southwest of the empire, reached Rome and plundered the city before invading the west of Iberia and Gaul, where they finally installed themselves. Today, many South French peoples and Spanish people may have some Germanic origins. On to 433, the Roman Empire was being invaded from every side, and the empire was collapsing especially on the western part. At that same moment, a military chieftain known as Aetius who had been captured by the Huns in the northeast of the Balkans, was taken into captivity where he learned their techniques of fighting and traditions. He then eventually created a relationship with the king of the Huns, Ruga, who permitted him to form his own Hunnic army to fight for Rome against the barbarians. He became as well friend of a young Hunnic warrior whose name was Attila. The two of them decided to collaborate and together fight for Rome. The relationship between the Western Roman Empire and the Huns was so positive that the Emperor invited Attila to his palace in Rome. In addition, the Roman Emperor Valentinian III was impressed by Asia's courage and loyalty to the Empire with the relationship he had created with Attila and the Huns 
that he was given the title of Roman general in Gaul. A year after, Ruga died leaving the throne to Attila and his brother Bleda, who became the rulers of the Huns within the residence in the plains of Pannonia, northern Hungary, for the reasons it was a flat territory that was practical for cavalry which reminded them the steppes of Central Asia. Attila and his brother Bleda started raiding the Eastern Roman Empire in 441, taking advantage while Romans were busy fighting the Sassanids in the east. Realizing that the Huns were penetrating the northern territories of the empire, the Eastern Romans who were unprepared had to send more troops to the north, but then they realized that it would not be enough for the Huns who were more numerous than they thought. The Huns pillaged and burned many villages in the Balkans and even descended with their strong cavalry, which was their traditional technique of fighting, to northern Thrace and onto the walls of Constantinople. The Eastern Roman Emperor Theodosius II had no choice then to negotiate for peace with the Huns. However, Attila and Bleda, who weren't the kind of persons to have a dialogue with for the Romans, imposed the Eastern Roman Empire to pay them a large amount of tribute in exchange for peace. The Emperor was obliged to pay the Huns in order to save the territories of the Eastern Empire and try to create a better relationship with the Huns. In 445, Attila assassinated his own brother Bleda with a blade and became the new king of the Huns, who will later be known by every historian as Attila the Hun. We knew not that much about Bleda and the other Hunnic chiefs, however, Attila was known as being one of the most ruthless military leaders of all time. As Attila knew exactly how to apply military pressure on his troops in order to get what he wants. Thus, Attila, compared to the other Huns and barbarians, spoke Latin and knew very well the Romans more than anyone else. Attila wanted to destroy the Roman Empire and invade more and more territories. His goal was to make the Eastern Romans pay a larger amount of tribute, to pay more mercenaries, tools and weapons to siege Roman fortresses. He immediately ordered a second invasion of the Eastern Roman Empire without prevention. This is when the relationship between Aetius, the Romans and Attila, the Huns, started to break off. The Eastern Romans, who were unable to defend the borders of the Empire, were defeated at the Battle of the Otters in 447. Attila then menaced the Eastern Roman Emperor to multiply the amount of tribute times 6. But in 450, the Western Roman Emperor Valentinian III was worrying for his succession as he only had daughters. Not wanting his sister Honoria to have a son which could cause problems in the succession, he sends her to Constantinople after seeing she had a lover who was subsequently executed. As an act of revenge against the emperor, she sent her ring to the king of the Huns Attila, calling for help to retaliate against her brother. Attila thought it was a promise of marriage and consequently demanded a portion of the Western Empire. Rome was so furious about that and started to realize that Attila had broken the alliance with the Western Roman Empire. Even General Aetius, who was in Gaul, understood that Attila had become a danger for the Empire. Meanwhile, the Eastern Roman Emperor stopped paying tribute to Attila as Constantinople had no more money and had to concentrate most of its troops on the Eastern Front against the Sassanids. Attila was furious and sent a message to the Emperor saying that if there would be no more tribute for the Huns, he would invade and siege Constantinople. However, Attila and his army had realized from some Roman captives that the walls of Constantinople were too high and that there were two great ranges of walls protecting the city, which would make the passage into Constantinople quite impossible without any heavy material. The Huns did not have catapults and the right weapons to siege the city, because it wasn't their traditional way of fighting for steppe warriors. At the end, Attila gave up 
and took the decision to abandon the siege of Constantinople and instead he with his armies decided to head towards the west in the direction of the Western Roman Empire. In 450, the Han conquered as fast as a storm all the western territories of Europe, forcing many Germanic tribes to collaborate in the Hunnic army, such as the Gepids, Vandals and Alamans. Attila had created the most powerful steppe army there had never been in all Turkish steppe history, even more than the one of Genghis Khan, regrouping an army of Hunnic horsemen and a strong Germanic infantry. After a few weeks of invasions in Europe, Attila's army finally crossed the Rhine River, penetrated Gaul and burned a couple of villages on his passage. At that very moment, Attila's empire was huge. It was stretching from the Volga River in the east down to the border of the Balkans in the south up to modern France in the west. At that same moment, the Western Roman Empire which had been an ally of the Huns during a long time started realizing that it would soon deal with problems with the arrival of the Huns in Gaul. At this point, Rome did not have the military power to fight against Attila. The Huns were rude sharks for the Romans, as if they came out of the blue. The Roman army were not ready to affront an enemy who had a completely different way of fighting. General Aetius immediately rushed to Gaul after having been in Italy for some time and demanded help to the neighboring Germanic tribes, the Franks, the Burgundians and the Visigoths to form an alliance against the Huns. The Visigoth king, King Alaric, accepted as well as the Burgundians and Franks. However, we have no idea why the Alans did not accept, and we demand ourselves whether they wanted to join the Huns or the Romans. Back in the east of Gaul, Attila's army sacked the cities of Metz, Reims, Beauvais before reaching Lutetia, the capital of Gaul. The Huns' main techniques were to slaughter entire villages one by one to send a very strong message to the ones who stood in front of their passage. Attila then used many captives in order to learn Roman siege and plan his attack on Orleans to take over Gaul and other Roman fortresses, which was the only thing Huns weren't able to do. In the south, the Roman army marched towards north of Gaul, as Aetius knew that Attila desired to take over something which escaped his and the Romans' mind. Attila and the Huns were presented as a great ferocious leader to Aetius, as he did not know what exactly their intentions were. Furthermore, if Attila desired to conquer Gaul, he had no other choices than to siege the city of Orleans, which was one of the center Roman power of Gaul. Aetius' plan was to leave the Huns pillaging the city before attacking them with the help of the Visigoths and the other Germanic tribes from behind. On the other front, after defeating many Celtic tribes on his passage, Attila was now on his way to Orleans to meet the Alan tribe with who Attila wished to form an alliance with not knowing that Aetius was going to ambush him from behind. However, when Attila arrived at Orleans, the Alans did not come, and the Huns took the advantage to start the siege by pillaging the city with arrows of fire. By this siege and invasion of Gaul, the Huns would have become the only Asian invaders in history to have conquered the furthest territories from their homeland. 
as they had traveled and conquered more than 8,916.2 kilometers, in other words, 7,430 miles, and were at some miles to reach the Atlantic Ocean. By the time the Romans of Asia, who had been hidden in the southern part of Orleans, arrived from nowhere with the Visigoths and attacked Attila's army by killing a great part of their cavalry. Attila, who was completely in panic, realized that he had been ambushed by the Romans and was forced to abandon the siege of Orleans. The Huns then retreated to the west and found refuge in an area located today in modern-day Champagne, France, which is known as the Catalonian Plains, which was a flat land practical for cavalry. Back in Orleans, Aetius and King Alaric allied themselves with the Alan chief Sangiban and later all the Germanic tribes, the Franks, the Burgundians and even Saxons with who Aetius had made the alliance with, joined the Romans and Visigoths. The Roman Germanic army was created and they rushed towards the east to chase Attila. However, Attila had left behind him a contingent of 15,000 Jepid warriors to cover his retreat. Even though the Jepid slowed the Roman Germanic army, they were destroyed during the night by Asia's army, which permitted the Romans to follow the direction of Attila's army. After a while, the Romans finally spotted Attila's army, which brought them near the Marne River, a large plain where Attila had positioned his forces. This area known today as the Catalonian Plains would become the battlefield of the last great battle of the antiquity period. It is actually obvious that Attila and the Huns had decided to affront the Romans in this area, as the land was flat, so practical for the Hunnic cavalry. Attila had positioned some of his Hunnic cavalry on a ridge in order to survey the Roman Visigoth movements and report in any case of attack. As soon as the Roman Germanic army arrived, Aetius decided to deploy his army. He sent the Visigoths under King Alaric on the ridge to control the eastern side of the area, while he with his cavalry remained on the west. However, when the Hunnic forces saw the Visigoths arriving on the ridge, they retreated rapidly back to the camp to prevent Attila that the enemy had spotted them and was near them. Attila and the Huns then deployed as well their troops to get ready for the battle. The Roman Germanic army of Asia formed a total of 80,000 warriors who were mostly Germanics such as Franks, Burgundians, Visigoths and even Saxons. The Roman infantry was positioned on the west accompanied by the Germanic warriors on the front line in order to form a shield wall to break through arrows. The Alan cavalry of Sangeban controlled the center while the Visigoths were positioned on the eastern side near the ridge under King Alaric's cavalry and archers. King Alaric's son, Thorismund, stayed on the ridge to protect it and send reinforcements if needed. Finally, Aetius' Roman cavalry remained on the far west behind the infantry accompanied with a few archers. The Hunnic Germanic army was disorganized compared to the Romans, however, formed a total of 100,000 Hunnic and Germanic warriors such as Franks, Ostrogoths and the remaining Jepids. Attila stayed in the center encircled by his strong Hunnic cavalry. The Ostrogoths were positioned on the left accompanied with Franks while the right was controlled by the Jepids. Attila's infantry was mostly Germanic apart from its cavalry which was the strongest part of his army. Before starting the battle in the afternoon, Attila made a long standing speech to his army, warning that if any warriors refused to fight and retreated was already a dead man for him. Attila waited until the ninth hour to begin the battle, waiting to see if any of his warriors could retreat under cover of darkness. However, on the southern part of the area, 
Asia's Alaric and Sangeban had positioned all of their forces and waited patiently for the opponent to attack. The battle began as Attila moved on with his strong Hunnic cavalry towards the Roman Germanic center held by the Alans. The Hunnic traditional way of fighting was to fire arrows and split its cavalry to the west and right in order to weaken the enemy infantry. When Attila's cavalry approached the Roman center, the Huns fired the islands of Sangeban with arrows, which forced Sangeban to retreat back to the south of the battlefield, as his warriors did not have the right shields to block the arrows. Attila then returned at the back of his army and sent his entire infantry towards the Romans and Visigoths. On the right, the Ostrogoths infantry affronted the Visigoths of King Alaric, while the Roman Germanic infantry affronted the Jephids. The two sides managed to keep the shield walls aligned even though the Roman archers massacred a great part of the Jephid infantry. But as the center of the Roman Germanic army had retreated, there was a gigantic gap which gave the advantage to Attila to penetrate and attack the Visigoths on the right. During this attack on the eastern side, Attila managed to kill King Alaric with an arrow and the battle was now turning on Attila's favor who was on his way to destroy the eastern flank of the Roman Germanic army. As the Romans struggled in the west against the Jepids, Aetius who had learned that King Alaric was killed and that the eastern flank was about to collapse, he immediately moved to the right of the battlefield to replace Sangeban's troops on the center to block Attila from going forward. Attila then sent the rest of his Hunnic infantry to finish it. However, he ignored that some of the Visigoth army held by Alaric's son Therosmund had stayed on the ridge to send reinforcements in any case of need, had learned about his father's death. The furious son Therosmund arrived with his army and infantry and destroyed the eastern flank of the Hunnic Germanic army. Attila realized that again he had been ambushed and that he was now about to lose his army, ordered an immediate retreat abandoning the battlefield. At the end of the battle, the Romans were completely devastated. This battle had been one of the most costless ones of the Romans since all the battles they had fought against the barbarians. Aetius wondered if Attila was going to re-attack during the night or get some more mercenaries. The Roman Germanic army wasn't at all in the mood to restart another engagement as they were completely exhausted. Hopefully by midnight the Huns did not attack or send reinforcements and the next day Attila with his army left Gaul behind the Rhine river. According to many sources, we don't know why Attila never attacked back or attempted to, even though the most certain reason was that he had understood that he wasn't ready for that. All of this meant that the Roman Germanic army was now victorious and Aetius was recognized as the hero of the battle and would later be known as the protector of the Western Roman Empire and more known in the West as the last of the Romans. This battle which had been the last great battle of the antiquity period was an event that marked the end of Hunnic supremacy over Europe. As the Huns never conquered back the west and started to move back towards the east. For Rome and the Germanic tribes it was a great victory, however for the Huns it was a total defeat and a terrible loss of confidence. Attila had shown a great lack of invincibility for his empire and army as it was the first time he had been defeated and thrown away from Roman territory. Even after this defeat, Attila and his armies of Huns raided some other cities of the Roman Empire in today northern Italy, but it would not last as in 453 Attila died, for still unknown reasons, probably from illness. And right after that, a chaos took place in the empire. The Hunnic Empire was being attacked by all the Germanic tribes which had been under their supremacy for a long time, were fed up and especially after their great defeat in Gaul, they wouldn't trust the Hunnic Empire and thus fight for their independence. 
the predecessors of Attila, his sons, who were now leading the empire, struggled to fight back the rebels and were defeated by the Jepids at the Battle of Nidau in Hungary and were forced to retreat towards the east. In 454, after having been defeated by the Jepids, the Hunnic Empire collapsed completely. It is not yet clear whether the last Huns took refuge inside Europe, which could explain the hypothesis of the Hungarians, or if they went back to Central Asia where they came from, which could probably explain the later rise of the Gokturks. However, the main importance about the Huns and the Romans was the Battle of the Catalonian Plains, which had been a massacre on both sides. It would have completely changed our history if the opposite had happened. If the Romans had lost this battle, all the traces of Roman civilization would have been eradicated from history. In any case, the Roman Empire wouldn't have entered, as after the collapse of the Hunnic Empire, the victorious Aetius was assassinated by the Emperor Valentinian III to avoid him to steal his power. At the end of the 5th century, the Western Roman Empire was dissolved by the Germanic tribes which then established their independent kingdoms. The first one of all these Germanic tribes to take the upper hand and defeat the Western Roman Empire were the Frankish tribes which had migrated since the arrival of the Huns a few centuries ago in the area of today modern Belgium moved south and in Stalin Gaul to create their own kingdom which would later give birth to the first great Frankish empire, the ancestors of the French with Clovis being its first ruler. Today in Western Europe General Aetius is known as an important figure for Europeans, although contrarily in the East, many people consider Attila as a national hero, especially in Hungary, where was constructed his statue in Budapest, for the reason many Hungarians debate on the fact their ancestors were the Huns. The most current question many people ask is, were the Huns the ancestors of Turks or Mongols? and are the Hungarians of today one of their descendants? Well, according to historians, the most certain answer to this is yes. The Huns came from the Xiongnu confederacy and were not only Turks and Mongols, but a multiplicity of steppe warriors who came from the great steppes of Mongolia and Central Asia. So the Huns were surely both the ancestors of Turks and Mongols. By the way, the name Attila comes from old Turkish vocabulary and still today many Turks and Hungarians use this name. So we have finally reached the end of this long standing video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. For the ones who follow my channel, this was my first video in English as I usually do my videos in French, especially on the history of Japan. But I wanted to share this great video to all people who can be able to understand it. By the way, it would be a pleasure if you guys could subscribe to my channel and maybe give me some feedback in the comment area which could help me create more of these long types of historical videos in the future. So thanks to all of you guys and we will probably see back ourselves in a future video on my channel. Bye!